simply says, when I look back over my life and I see all the things God's done for me, been through danger. Church of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. And certainly every time we come, we look for God to give us an outpour. We had such an awesome outpour this week and looking for God to re refresh in us and regroup us. And sometimes, how I many of you know that when you do ministry, sometimes you get weak and tired, weary, you know, dealing with, mm hmm yeah. Uh-huh, and so, you know, everybody ain't saved like they're supposed to, supposed to be. Like they say, you know, like the word says, but we know that we all growing in the ministry and God is all working on all of us. We have never reached our perfection yet, but God is still completing a work in us and we have to understand that we do get weary while we're doing well. But God gives us strength 
to endure even mm, Negroes, praise God. Y'all don't have that here. Amen. I, I just know that God gives us strength. But how many of you know that you're not participating in the recession? Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm scared. Some, some of y'all don't say nothing. You just come in just... You better open your mouth so your breath won't stink. Keep opening your mouth. So, that's right. Keep your mouth open. Look at somebody and just tell them, say, I got to keep my mouth open. Because God has given me the grace to endure this recession and we are not participating in it matter of fact we already out if you all don't see the sign if you all ain't caught it yet look at somebody and say my children's children are getting ready to reap the benefits that I've been trying to do all along I don't hear nobody in here if anybody should be excited I think the African American church should be excited about this president that God has given just to us. And how many of you really know that your life is going to get better? Hallelujah. I just thank God. He, God makes no mistakes. And so we get excited about what God is doing because we see ourselves not coming out. We already out. Amen. So that's what God is doing. The book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy. I want to hit you and quit you this morning. My time is very limited, so I'm very cognizant of time. My pastor gets on me all the time about my time. But the book of Deuteronomy, I want to go to first Joel, the book of Joel. Joel, J-O-E-L. Not J-O-B. Y'all didn't catch that. Only Bible folk that read the Bible understand what I'm talking about. J-O-E-L, Joel, the book of Joel. And the second chapter and verse 25. And it reads like this. And I will restore unto you. Tell somebody this is restoration time. I will restore unto you the years that the locust hath eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, and all the worms. What they've done to eat up your stuff. You got some worms right around, right outside your house. That's trying to figure out what you're going to do right in through here. God is saying, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. And then he said, my great army, which I sent among you. And then he said, and ye shall eat in I just look at your neighbor and say, I don't look like I've lost a meal. <laughs> you shall eat at McDonald's until Jesus comes. You shall eat at Ritz. You shall eat at Morton's. You shall eat at Ruth Chris. That's what I was trying to say. You shall eat whatever you want to eat. You shall eat in plenty and be what? Satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be embarrassed. Never be put to shame. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else in my people shall never be ashamed. You will never be intimidated. You will never be to the point where the enemy will tell you that you can't have what you want. Look at somebody and say, I can get anything I want right now. Right now. Right now. Some of y'all ain't saying that. I'm scared of y'all. Chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet ye tithe rob me in tithe and in offerings? Let me tell you something, sisters and brothers. This is the best time to get on board. If you don't pay your tithe, this is the right time to pay. I ain't get but a few amens right there. Ask your neighbor, say, do you pay tithes? Do you pay tithes? 
Some of y'all ain't looking at nobody. I'm scared. I'm scared. If you ain't paid them, start doing it. Because between now and December, by the first of the year, God is getting ready to give increase to the body of Christ. For everybody that is faithful in paying their tithe. I'm seeing the ones that ain't clapping. I'm scared. I'm so scared. The Bible said that you be cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He said, bring ye all tithes. The storehouse that they may be meeting my house, prove me and see that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Then he sat down at the eleventh verse, and I will rebuke the devourer, the folk that got you up in court, the folk that's trying to take your money off your job. I don't hear nobody in here. Folk that owe you and they won't pay you back. Yeah. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and ye shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord. All nations, everybody, shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land. And for the saith the Lord thy God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, But as it is written, eyes have not seen, 